the long-awaited SDI version of the ATEM Mini Series is finally here, and I'm ready to take a look at the mid-level model, the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. This four input and two output switcher is the next iteration of the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. So let's explore it. Just to let you know, Blackmagic has sent things to the channel before to take a look at, but this one I purchased with my own money. So what is this thing? If you're new to this world of video switchers, the A10 Mini, released a few years back, was a tiny but powerful HDMI switcher from Blackmagic Design. Since then, there's been a few iterations, but the one thing we all wondered was when they would add SDI ports to the box. This new line, the ATEM SDI, ATEM SDI Pro ISO, and ATEM SDI Extreme ISO, is the answer. Since I have the ATEM SDI Pro ISO here with me, I'm going to explore it mostly in this video, but we'll check in on the other models, and you can get in the loop on those in my other video. It's all SDI. First up, this ATEM has those four SDI inputs, perfect for cameras and SDI-based video devices. You can, of course, hook up anything you want to them since they have scalers on each input, and with the help of a microconverter, you can attach a computer or a HDMI camera. A nice improvement here over its HDMI counterpart is the addition of the second output. So now these two SDI outputs can be used for sending whatever signal you want to a monitor or external device. Some buttons on the top of the device will let you switch the sources on SDI output number one, and the other output can be switched from within the ATEM software control. All the buttons in the same place. At a glance, you might not notice any difference between the ATEM Mini and the ATEM SDI lineup, which makes these new ones seem very familiar and an understandable upgrade from the older ones. I quite like that they've used the same enclosure and form factor here. That way you can replace an ATEM Mini with an ATEM SDI without much change to your setup, especially if you've built it into a box. Buttons, buttons, buttons. All the buttons are where they've previously been on the ATEM Mini. You may see this lack of change as a pro or a con. I do get why they would stick with the same familiar layout, to be honest here, but it does seem like this would be a perfect time to make some tweaks and changes. For example, I'd much rather see the control of the other SDI output as opposed to this picture-in-picture -picture preset here. And I'm sure whatever you want on your panel is different from what I would want on my panel. So it's probably better for them just to stick with what they had and then supplement the rest of the buttons with a Stream Deck and Companion, for example. Still though, if Blackmagic Design does do some analysis on which buttons are used on an ATEM Mini Extreme, I would love to see that data. No HDMI ports anywhere. Now it is hard to please us all, but there have been a few comments already about the lack of any HDMI connections on the device. For me, that's perfectly fine. I have more than enough converters here on hand to make this work, but it's certainly a consideration if all your cameras and monitors are HDMI right now. There is a case to be made for one HDMI output for a local monitor, but in my case, a converter will do just fine. Live streaming and ISO recording. Both my ATEM SDI Pro ISO and the other ATEM SDI Extreme ISO have recording and streaming built in. This means I can simultaneously stream to YouTube, for example, record my program output, and record all the inputs coming into my switcher. And to think all of that is packed into this device and included in the price is still really nice to have in this ATEM Mini ATEM SDI series of switchers. What that means now is I have a wonderful five channel recorder for my SDI workflow. Here in my studio, I have the ATEM 2 Me Constellation HD set up, and I can send four of my SDI outputs into the ATEM SDI Pro ISO. Now I can record an isolated feed of those four inputs coming in and the program mix as well. This would be perfect for my YouTube videos or training series, because I'm sure it's one of the most affordable ways of getting a multi-channel recorder to complement the bigger ATEM switcher. I can record all the camera angles I want for a long form video and then use Resolve to re-edit that as I need. Connecting multiple cameras. Connecting up Blackmagic cameras works just the same and offers the same amount of control as previous ATEM switchers. In this case, you can directly connect SDI cameras like the Studio Camera 4K Pro over SDI to take a video feed from the camera. Then you can use one of the SDI outputs to send a return feed to the camera, sending back camera control data and tally information. If you have multiple SDI cameras in your setup, you can include an SDI distribution box to send data back to all those cameras. Why choose this over the ATEM Mini? I can think of a few cases where you might want to opt for the SDI models over the ATEM Mini models. If your venue or your gear is all SDI based anyway, you might as well choose the ATEM SDI model. In this case, you might only need a couple of HDMI to SDI converters in a few places that really need HDMI. Next, if you want to run long distances, it still makes sense in my opinion to go for SDI. Fiber HDMI cables have become very useful in the last few years in the ATEM Mini world, but personally, I find them a bit of a pain to work with. You have to run them in the right direction. 
they don't spool very well and are hard to work with, and it feels like they're gonna break a lot faster than the SDI versions. If all your cameras are HDMI, stick with the ATEM Mini, it'll work nicely for your setup, but if they're all SDI already, or most of them are anyway, then the ATEM SDI lineup will make a lot more sense for you. Either way, you can have fewer connections and therefore potentially fewer issues in the future. What's missing? It's interesting not to see the word mini in this series, especially since it's the same enclosure. My best guess though, is that the naming was getting a little bit too long. Who wants an ATEM Mini Extreme ISO SDI? I'm surprised not to see the counter overlay added to the ATEM SDI series. This was a new small feature in the ATEM Constellation HD series, and it was a nice one to have. I'm not sure if it'll make it to this lineup, nothing on that just yet. Another strange thing missing is the lack of multi-view on the ATEM SDI base model. Now this is in keeping with the original ATEM Mini, it didn't have multi-view, but the addition of that second SDI makes it a bit of a shame not to see that feature included. Price. Here's a glance at the current pricing of the ATEM Mini and the ATEM SDI models that are fairly comparable. It's nice to see not a huge jump between the Mini and the SDI versions here, and interesting to see the same price between the Pro ISO versions. Overall, you'll not choose between the features, you'll just choose between the connections that you want which is much simpler. What's next for the ATEM world? One device I think Blackmagic might be missing right now is the HyperDeck Shuttle SDI. The HyperDeck Shuttle HD just came out a few months ago and it was designed to slot nicely next to your ATEM Mini. Now it seems an SDI version of that is missing from the lineup and it'll be interesting to see if that becomes a reality. I'll keep testing out this ATEM SDI Pro ISO in the studio here and see how well it stacks up. I'll probably use it for a lot of recordings, for YouTube videos and I'll try to get my hands on the other ATEM SDI models. In the meantime though, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.